so this workshop is uh, ideally targeting for those who are uh, interested to to take their career into kyc or into client screening or kyc remediation projects or any other uh, projects related to kyc or client screening so before we get into the uh, uh, workshop this is a basic rules uh, uh, to follow us to have an effective and interactive uh, workshops before we get into our uh, main objective so could you please just go through it and these are the basic rules just whenever we are uh, interacting or presenting anything please sway i mean please put your mobiles on silent and if you have any queries please wait for your turn and please be on mute while some other people are talking over video conference and please be sure that your uh, tv or any other devices put on mute in order to have a uh, good sessions and uh, as you know that we are conducting uh, uh, this uh, uh, workshops on uh, for the group so all this uh, materials or workshops will be the uh, uh, copyrights of our group so so let us just kick start our uh, workshop so this is a workshop for K known as kyc for beginners so so what we will talk about uh, in this uh, presentation is in your screen on your screen so we will talk about what is kyc and uh, who all our customers will accept as uh, our customer and what are the objectives and purpose of kyc and st steps in order to know our client and why we need to perform kyc and the basic terms although um, maybe some some people are very familiar but uh, for the benefit of people who are very new to this we will just uh, uh, talk about what is what is a risk based approach due diligence what are what is the meaning of beneficial owners and what are what do you what what we have understanding on controlling parties or also known as related parties and uh, what is the meaning of screening so just let's start our with the basic definition of kyc so can anyone tell me what is kyc and uh, what is kyc is all about so um hi this is monica that said so uh, kyc is all about knowing your customers better in the terms that we need to understand who is going to have a relationship with the bank who the individual is what is their um that the services that they are requesting from the bank and what sort of products they're going to ask from the bank and what is their um source of income or the source of funds that they would initially with. So these are a few things that, um, these are the information basically that's mm. collected with so, um, KYC. And also like um, important information like their identification documents, uh, which need to be um, genuine, like which should be issued by any government approved authority. So yeah, that's what KYC is all about. Yeah, so as per my research, so KYC was introduced in 18, 1980s decade when drug trafficking and the arms smuggling troubled the world. So the concerning concerns were raised on the huge profit generated from these activities and threat of laundering the illicit money. Due to massive safety and security threat encouraged governments uh, to have came up with uh, certain regulations. So for your better understanding of regulations, I have came up with the, what do you mean what do you mean by regulations so it is a it's like a set of rules or directives made created by a law enforcement or authority of a country so for example in uk we have you know a financial conduct authority who supervises the activities of a corporation or banks or to the matter of financial institution and if anyone is not uh, you know adhering to those guidelines you know they will just depending upon the violations they will slap a, a fine or cancel their registrations as well so any queries on this uh, slide or would you like to add anything else
okay we will just move to the next slide so this slide talks about you know what is kyc uh, a normal definition of the kyc is like you know a process of uh, business verifying the identity of its clients i did not went through deep information and extracted uh, the definition as per my knowledge you know i have just uh, defined it in a very simple language and it's like a process of verifying ident identification of its clients so basically you know doing kyc uh involves uh, three key steps you know first of all the first basic step is you know collecting necessary documentation before we open an account so for example if uh, if you do not have any bank account and if you are wishing to open a bank account and uh, you you approach a bank and they uh, they told to just uh, uh, fill up an application form and uh, required one second there is some problem yeah so they approach with an application form to you update it and uh, uh, request you to submit some uh, id copies and uh, uh, utility bill once they get it so the collection of uh, documents will be completed by first step and then the the teller or the bank uh, representative will verify your documents by applying a risk risk based approach and due diligence so we will just uh, 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 talk about the risk based approach and due diligence after some slides and the fun, once they verify it whether you uh, i mean you have presented the correct documents and uh, screening is done then they will save then they will open the account and onboard you as a, as their customer so do you have any queries on this uh, presentation or would you like to add any any other point any certain points to it okay so we will move to the next slide so basically you know we 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 generally we we were talking about a lot about what is a, Well, who know your customer what who is a customer actually so a customer may be a natural person or any uh, any other legal entity who are registered with uh, uh, with the regulators they are known as you know a uh, customer a genuine customer so it may be a natural person a may be entity or a trust or a partnership firm or any other entity type so you should not open an account for a prospective or a customer until we have completed uh, his prescribed due diligence so in order to know our customer we must know our kyc policy so as you know that every bank has their own policies and procedures in place so it might differ from one bank to another bank so we must uh, obtain identifying information on all the person name on the account and establish the customer profiles at the beginning of an accounts relationship so so in order to understand i will give you just a basic example just we were talking about you know uh, if a husband and wife wants to open an account together known as joint account so we must collect identify identification information for both the individuals so it's not like you know only one individual only husband uh, identification proof i am i mean proof of id and address proof are enough to open an account if 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 account is opening as a joint so we must uh, collect uh, proof of id and a uh, valid address proof for both of the uh, account holders so do you have any queries or would you like to add any other points to it okay we will move to the next slide so it basically talk about uh, talks about you know objective of effective kyc policy the objective of kyc guideline is to prevent banks from being uh, misused intentionally or unintentionally by criminal elements for uh, money laundering activities so as you know that you know uh, no one i mean uh, no criminals and all other uh, uh, anyone who has criminal record can't open a bank account so there must be effective kyc policies and procedures in place with financial institution or a bank uh, to just to not to allow any other any other person who have criminal background or who uses the services of the bank to support money laundering or terrorist financing 
so we must be alert during the account opening process to any suspicious activity you must report any such activity to your uh, supervisors or compliance officers to the matter if you came across anything while onboarding or while while remediating your accounts so the kyc serves as a gatekeeping function for the company and it is screens prospective customers before they are accepted as account holders so why kyc is mandatory now you know become uh, just 2015 to uh, 18 years before you know kyc was not mandatory i mean such thing after the 26 i mean after september 11 attacks you know they were on in on the united states after this attack it was found that the financing of this activity is done from money laundering so from that activity Uh, all KYC norms and regulations have become more efficient and effective. And they in US after that attack, they came up with the US Patriot Act, which is you know a very uh, effective uh, law in the US. So now we'll talk about what is due diligence and what is risk-based approach. Can anyone throw uh, some uh, light on it before we just discuss it? hello okay so i'll just go through it so due diligence is a, it is a, it is a method which involves uh, some steps by financial institutions to avoid Uh, to avoid committing an offense or any breach it also involves performing a risk based approach as i told you every bank must have a effective kyc policy so they have you know they will uh, they will have a due diligence approach and a risk based approach before they onboard any client so it it contains uh, uh, any steps such as you know verifying the uh, id copies for example if you submit any id copies and uh, uh, proof of will it must be a latest proof of will not any you know any any utility bill which uh, which is very old and uh, and proof of id must not expired so it, you must have a valid proof of id so and also before you onboard any before uh, before a customer is onboarded they will screen they will screen your names Uh, account holder names in their tools so we'll talk about screening in the next slide so uh, risk based approach what is risk based approach is a process that allows you to identify potential high risk of money laundering or and terrorist financing and develop strategies to mitigate them so in order to understand due diligence and risk based approach i gave just an, a simple example to understand in a layman's approach so let us take the same example where client is opening where, where client is willing to open a joint account with his wife as a secondary owner at a bank in usa and then client approaches a bank and the teller of the bank give an application account i mean application along with the require i mean along with the document requested uh, to him so the customer you know fill up the documents and uh, are submit the requested uh, requested proof of id uh, to the teller so now the teller identifies uh, i mean now tell it is a responsibility of the teller to identify and that the client is genuine and it do, i mean there is no threat or any risk if they onboard that client to to, uh, to use the services of the bank so so what all the new due diligence procedures or uh, risk based approach uh, uh, teller will follow like you know they will just uh, focus on the proof of id whether it is a valid proof of id or not and uh, if utility bill contains uh, their the customer name and uh, they will just uh, 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 screen the 
prospective uh, customer name into their tools whether to check whether the customer has any any criminal backgrounds or any he did any fraudulent activities so once he verified all these things uh, and it also contains some other factors so we'll come to know in the next uh, coming slides so once the teller satisfied all this criteria and he is confident that the customer is very genuine and he can or he or she you, you use their services though so he can just you know successfully onboard the clients so it will tell you know due risk based approach is like you know is just i give you an example uh, risk based approach is like you know screening is one of the risk based approach before onboarding a client uh, checking if the customer has any uh, criminal background or any fraudulent activities so that is an uh, uh, example of a risk based approach you will have uh, many examples or controlling steps in risk based approach so any other uh, i mean examples or any queries or any discussion points you would you would like to discuss on due diligence or a risk risk based approach before we just move to next slide okay so we were talking about you know a lot of things about screening once we the customer is on boarded we need to screen we need to screen so what do you mean by screening so client screening is a process that helps to ensure banks or financial institution that uh, no wrong people or entities uh, use their services or or uh, to support money laundering or trace financing to perform this task we have certain tools uh, such as you know lexis nexis or bridge screening or wall check and many other which helps financial institutions or banks to not to onboard entities or people to use the money so i mean services for money laundering and terrorist i mean terrorist financing uh, so any queries on the screening okay so as you know no as you so you might come across you know in kyc what do you mean, what is you know regulated entities or listing entities so we will just go through uh, point by point what is regulated entities regulated entities are those which are regulated under an approved regulator for example if any entity in us um, for example microsoft you know it is a very 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 uh, uh, i mean very large company and it is registered in the new york stock exchange maybe in uh, stock i mean in securities and exchange of commission so if it is registered under uh, approved regulator it is known as a uh, uh, regulated entity and if it is re registered under any uh, any stock exchange approved stock exchange then it is, it will be like in a, it is a listed entity you might also come across you know what is subsidiary company so for example if a subsidiary company if uh, microsoft and google are the sub, i mean both are you know uh, companies and microsoft is holding 100 percentage in google so microsoft uh, so google is known as uh, a subsidiary company because uh, microsoft is owning 100 percent in it so it is known as subsidiary company so you might also come across what is affiliate company so it means an entity if if a company is related or partially owned by its parent company it is known as affiliate company any queries till now hello yeah man yeah, who i have a uh, uh, i have a question about the screening uh screening. Uh, how okay. can uh, yeah uh, how can we screen our uh, uh, our portfolio or bank's portfolio with your provided uh, sanction uh, lists uh, like uh, world check lexis nexis so yeah because i think this is a very hectic process and uh, it uh, it must not be uh, possible uh, to do manually yeah it is not i mean it is impossible to do it manually for example as i told you in my previous example if a bank for example uh, let us assume any abc bank in a uh, us and uh, an a husband and wife approach the abc bank to open a joint account into their uh, uh, into the into the abc bank then uh, a teller of the bank will uh, 
approaches and all they they completed all the formalities collecting documents and everything then the teller will just you know use any any of these tools such as you know lexus nexus or bridger in uh, bridger screening they will just pick the full name of the uh, account holders for example husband husband name might be james uh, smith so he will enter the james smith into the tool and uh, he will uh, i mean with the various combinations uh, for example okay. sanctions or uh, pep or neg negative screenings so he will enter into the those combination and and and, and run the uh, tool so once uh, tool is run and it will populate certain results for example okay. uh, you know the tool is designed in such a way that you know all the criminal records and any fraudulent activity across the globe whichever is recorded will be recorded in that tool so as i told you the client name is john smith so any i mean any uh, so we will enter the, as you know that they will enter the name i mean uh, the client name and uh, all and all the records related to the uh, john maybe name john, name people who have committed crime related to john or david will pop up and uh, then the you know the aml analyst whomever is uh, performing that uh, 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 case will you know just uh, check all those results whether this that records whatever whatever is popping up is matching matching or not matching with our customer records for example if you have uh, the customer uh, driving license it states uh, his uh, i'm you i think you know he, driving license contains uh, the address of the client date of birth uh, and uh, his uh, a unique uh, driving license id so if that information is matching with any other with uh, with any of the heads or any individuals to it so we might not uh, onboard that customer because he already did some fraud or might involved in some uh, money laundering activities so we will just not accept uh, uh, that customer as our client and for and in other instance uh, in other uh, example as well if that customer is no i do not have, i mean that results do, do not have any matching with our customer then uh, we are we will be confident that he is not he will not use our services to support our money laundering or any other things so that is called as you know screening Yeah. okay i have another question uh, okay. if a bank wants to uh, uh, scan uh, scan uh, its or all portfolio uh, like uh, or look back uh, 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 i would uh, say uh, if a bank wants to look back its portfolio whole portfolio from the world check or uh, lexus nexus something or the tool like uh, them uh, how uh, how how the bank perform the overall look back screening so first of all could you please tell me what is portfolio what are you referring to portfolio for example if a customer uh, if uh, if a bank has a uh, a portfolio of uh, uh, 15000 or, or 35000 accounts and he want to okay. uh, screen his whole portfolio with the desired tool uh how so what is the efficient way is there any tool provided by the vendors to uh, or, or in so, or some sort of integration with the bank system uh i want to know uh, more about it is there any so, yeah. practice internationally practice uh, there is there any international pra pra practice or uh, is there any tool available for uh, uh, for this Yes, uh, we have tools in the market such as you know, as I mentioned in the, my screen, you can see my screen such as you know, Lexus Nexus or Bridge Screening or World Check. They have the uh, criteria depends upon you are the requirement of the bank. Uh, so they will perform the overnight screening as well daily on a daily basis screening as well. Uh, I mean to ensure that you know the the ongoing customers also you know if they have any. uh negative news or uh, if they are involved in any such activities that news will pop up and uh, 
the if the if the news if the hits are pop up then they will start investigating into it okay 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 great any other queries would you like to uh i have uh, uh, i have some queries but uh, i should i think we should move on uh, i will ask later okay okay great so yeah so we will just uh, you know talk discuss about the what are beneficial owners and and the and the related parties involved in the, on uh, any type of entity a beneficial owner is a person who enjoys the benefits of ownership so it's a simple uh, uh, definition of the uh, meaning of beneficial owners and uh, uh, any discussion i mean any queries on it for example if you well, i'll just give you an uh, uh, one example to understand what uh, i mean beneficial owners uh, you uh, um uh, any man who decided uh, decided to open his own joint venture i mean his business and uh, he he appoints uh, some uh, uh, persons to I mean, to run his business so so in this example the owner of the business will be his per, that person who owns the business who contribute money to it who contribute maximum money to it i mean the highest money and the parties who maintain that will be the controlling parties so that is a simple example so a controlling parties or related parties are those who manages the business or takes the management decision or authorized to perform any investment or financial related decisions for example uh, uh, any big organization such as you know microsoft or google they have you know cfos chief uh, administrative officer chief executive officer they all are and the board of directors and or trustees to the matter board of trustees all those uh, people are responsible you know taking uh, any investments or any financial related decisions so all those people comes under you know controlling parties or related parties any other queries on it because you know we will uh, when once you are working into in any kyc international kyc department so you you will be very familiar with these uh, terms such as you know beneficial owners or controlling parties or related parties whatever terms you use it so any other uh, queries before we wind up this presentation so if you have any feedbacks or suggestions or if you want to hear it in the next our uh, kyc uh, basic uh, uh, press workshop in the next workshop please feel free to write, write to on this email id uh, i will have i will be happy to discuss those point in our next workshop so the next workshop in the next workshop we will discuss about you know how do we uh, what all the documents for each entity type uh, the it demands and uh, what all the mitigating points and uh, what are, how i mean what all the entity types and they will discuss about their uh, document requirements okay uh, hello yeah yeah uh, uh it would be uh, it would be great if you uh, if you will discuss about the fuzzy match screening also in next workshop sure 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 okay thank you uh, hey man yes hey man can i add something on uh, i think fahim asked about the uh, the screening process can i add something on it yes yeah, sure sure uh, sorry i did not uh, have seen your message <laughs> That's right. So uh, regarding, uh, so Fahim, you asked about the um, the screening process, like what or how can the bank screen if they've got 15,000 or 30,000 customers, right? So usually what the process is, uh, usually the vendor would be involved or they could buy softwares from outside or they could build, build up an internal software in collaboration with the IT department, which is working for the bank. 
they would uh, develop those softwares which would pull out information from the core banking systems so for example for retail banking customers you've got your retail banking um systems yeah customers you've got retail banking systems for asset management customers you've got your asset management systems so information for example the names the uh, date of birth or um uh, you know citizenship and things like these which can easily be pulled out from the core systems those information they are matched against WorldCheck or any other like LexisNexis. So these informations are matched on a separate application. And then this application, which is built up, that produces some results. And then alerts are generated, which are known as hits. They could be false positives, they could be true matches, or, uh, you know, so decisions need to be taken on the number of alerts generated. So that's how, that's what happens, you know, when the bank has to screen all the portfolio of their customers. So irrespective of which division the customers are onboarded onto, so they would just clean all of them and alerts are produced. Then there's a team working there who works on these alerts, who, who make a decision on if they are false positives, which means false positive means that you, you see that the names are not a complete match. You see that the DOB, that's the date of birth, you know, the month, the date and the year, they are different. Then you see that the nationalities are different or the citizenship is different um, and the addresses are different as well. So on these factors, then the alerts are discounted, which is known as false positive. So that's the screening process, you know, for um, for any customer. Like, okay, just okay, uh, okay, uh, uh, I understand. Uh, but uh, I want to know, uh, there is any scoring uh, model uh, for this in fuzzy match screening? Uh, for example, if uh, Jana, if the name of a customer matches the uh, system or the transaction monitoring system assigns us some score of uh, of it on the basis of name, if the DOB is matches, then it will add or it will more score on it. Uh, is there any scare, some sort of scoring model that uh, uh, you have or you have to mention or uh, you would like to mention? Yeah, see, uh, I'm not completely aware of the scoring, uh, the process of how the scores are allocated to each customer. But yes, as far as the scoring is concerned, there are the, uh, like 80 percent, you know, if so, for example, if the match is 80 percent. So, for example, in a name, if it's, um, you know, because you've got Arabic names, so Arabic names, you've got so many like Muhammad. Now, if Muhammad matches from the client's name, first part of the name Muhammad, matches with the world check name which is which has muhammad as well so that's and the client side has got two names to it so it's muhammad uh, muhammad yusuf for example so matching against muhammad iqbal yusuf on the world check side so it's an 80 percent match in that case because you've got muhammad yusuf matching against muhammad iqbal yusuf so that's a match there you know and that's more than 80 percent because it's two two words matching against e. so there is a score a lot allocated as well. It all depends on how you screen it, what information matches. But the score, we would not uh, assign a score to them. The score is already assigned by the vendors. That's in, because there's a client screening, a client scoring team as well. So they would assign different scores, you know, for different types of customers. So, so that's okay. how it happens. Yeah. Okay, okay. thank you. And one more suggestions as we discuss this presentation, uh, this workshop today, and the next presentation is all about you know uh, document requirements for each entity type. So does it will be sufficient for any uh, KY? I mean any person who wants to start their career as an analyst or an associate level as an entry level into the KYC uh, into the KYC stream? I need you, I need you, yeah I need your thoughts on it Sorry can you please repeat the question So the present I mean today's 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 workshops and the upcoming workshops on, on any and on on the entity documents requirements so, uh, so does the this workshops will be sufficient for an and uh, for any person to get an ent entry level uh, uh, role into any organization? Well, I think it should be because uh, I think we will cover all the points, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, because you know we covered from you know what is KYC from there to screening, and the next work in next workshop we will cover uh, 
uh, with uh, all document requirements with uh, each document requirement what is the purpose and the what uh, what uh, information we will be looking into oh, that document type i think it will be sufficient to get an entry level job uh, with these two workshops okay yeah, yeah. so if you have any other queries uh, please feel feel to feel free to write to the email which i have mentioned in in the earlier page and uh, or else you can just you know message me on whatsapp thanks everyone for attending this workshop and have a nice weekend i'll get back to you yeah. with uh, you. more details in the next present for the next workshop with detail with time and uh, details on it thank you so much thanks thank you man thank, thank you thank you